The Neosho mural by Lawrence Sanchez is a 9 foot by 45 foot mosaic mural constructed out of 61,000 colorful 1 inch square ceramic tiles. It was installed in 1965 on the south facing white brick wall of the now former Safeway grocery store. A sidewalk runs in front of the mural and it faces Neosho's Big Spring Park. The mural is sometimes erroneously referred to as the Safeway Mural. The mural's panoramic design depicts events in Neosho's history from its early settlement to the early days of the Space Age. Moving our attention to the far left upper corner of this mural and extending downward and to the right, we see how this area looked shortly after the first settlers arrived around Neosho in the 1830s, attracted by rich soil and clear water. Here, those early settlers are depicted by a pair of dark silhouetted figures tending to rows of green crops in plowed fields surrounded by tall, gray and black barked trees with foliage of light and dark green. Below, to the front right of this field, is a blue stream with gray rocky banks flowing behind a multi-story red-brown structure with a gray steeply slanting roof and tall gray smokestack which is surrounded by a green patch of earth. To the building's left is a long gray wood pile, and in front sits a light and dark gray pyramid-shaped or waste pile. This structure represents the first discovery of significant amounts of lead ores in the Neosho area in 1847. In the foreground are two male figures of surveyors with their tools. Their larger-than-life size represents the pivotal moment in Neosho's history as the tiny settlement became the county seat of Newton County and journeyed toward the years it became an important city in the nation's entry into the Space Age. The man on the left is on both knees holding a gunter's chain, a distance measuring device, and a survey pen in his hands while looking upward. His hair and beard are gray. He has on a long gray coat over a white shirt, wears a round brimmed blue gray hat, and a blue gray knapsack rests on his shoulders. The man to his right is looking downward. In his left hand, he holds a surveyor's compass on a staff, which is an instrument used to measure horizontal angles. He too has gray hair and beard. He wears a black round brimmed hat, green short sleeved shirt, and long green pants. He is knelt on his right knee. Gray boot gaiters cover his brown boots and raise up to his knees. To the right of the surveyors is a blue pool of water representing Neosho's Big Spring, which is located in the park directly across the street from this mural. A large white rock inscribed with the date 1839 rests in the center of the blue pool of water. The small community of Neosho was founded near that big spring and was chosen in 1839 to be the county seat of Newton County. It was from an initial survey point on the west edge of the big springs branch of waters that in 1846 they laid out the main streets that would become the town of Neosho. To the very center of the mural and to the lower right of the surveyors, we see a gray ox wearing a white yoke. To the right of the ox is the upper torso and head of the ox cart driver, representing the early European settlers who were attracted to the many springs in the area. These earlier settlers founded the community of Neosho. The larger-than-life ox driver is standing with their back facing the viewer. They have gray hair and wear a pink shirt. In the driver's his left hand is a dark gray whip that snakes through the air in the direction of the ox. Above the ox in the pool of blue water is a row of tall, conical-shaped dark and light green evergreen trees stretching skyward and descending to the background. To the front of the evergreen tree stands the gray and black octagonal-shaped gazebo that stood in the early days of Big Spring Park. 
Just visible behind and to the right of the tall evergreen trees, one can see the tops of some of the post-Civil War buildings on the square that replaced those destroyed during the war. To the right of the gazebo sits a red and brown brick two-story building. It has three windows on the top floor with a white rectangular sign above the centrally located door on the ground level. The sign is inscribed in black with the words Horses Home, and to the door's right, partially obscured by smoke, is a small light gray rectangular sign inscribed in dark gray reading Livery Stable. This livery stable was the first business built on East Main Street in early day Neosho. In front of the building sits a buggy with two large wheels to the back and two smaller wheels to the front with a dark blue top. Beside it stands a dark brown horse facing right. Located below the horse and buggy and to the lower right of the blue waters of Big Spring Branch is a white scroll with the word Bushwhacker inscribed on it in black. The scroll recalls the time in Neosho history shortly before and during the Civil War when a form of guerrilla warfare known as bushwhacking was prevalent along the Kansas-Missouri border. To the right of the scroll, a man representing the bushwhackers wears only gray pants with no shirt or shoes. His back is to the viewer, bending at the waist, and in his right hand he carries a white torch with red flames ascending skyward. Yellow, red, and orange flames engulf a white building in front of him. The people of Neosho were divided in their loyalties when war broke out. The town was occupied and raided by both sides of the conflict and suffered widespread destruction and devastation. The heavy gray and white smoke billowing up from the burning building drifts to the right at the top of the mural. In the smoke over the white building, the head of a Confederate soldier looks downward. He is wearing a gray kepi style hat with a black bill. His hair and beard are gray. His presence in the mural recalls when Neosho briefly served as the provisional capital of the state's secessionist government, when on October 30th, 1861, the disposed Missouri governor and a few secessionist legislators fleeing south out of the Union controlled Jefferson City, stopped in Neosho, and passed an ordinance of secession, and the Confederacy accepted it making Missouri a part of the Confederacy, at least from the Southern perspective. In reality, the Union maintained military control over most of Missouri throughout the war. During the war, the city of Neosho was the scene of many skirmishes between the two armies, and much of the downtown area was burned and destroyed by the end of the war. The soldier is looking down upon the tragic scene of a hanging that is taking place, which most likely was being carried out by bushwhackers. A large man with gray hair and beard has a noose of white ropes around his neck which hangs from the branch above him that is symbolically formed from the dark gray smoke as it drifts away from the white building set aflame by the bushwhacker. Below the man being hung is a woman standing in left profile with shoulder-length brown hair, wearing a light blue dress, a horrified expression on her face as she looks up at him. Beside her, a young girl, her back to the viewer, is wearing a pink dress with her long brown hair parted down the middle and gathered into two symmetrical braids, looks up at the man. They represent the horror and heartache brought to the families of the community during this time of conflict. At the top of the mural and to the right of the soldier's head sits a two-story white building facing forward with three dark windows on the upper floor and on the lower level a door is centered and flanked by each side by a dark window. This building represents the Masonic Hall that sat on the city square and was one of a few downtown buildings not destroyed during the war. Then symbolically running out in a straight line from the Masonic Hall are four large tan signs inscribed with gray letters which are held aloft with tan post. From left to right they read Scotch Land Co. Missouri Land and Livestock Co. Spring City Hotel and Atlantic Pacific 
Railroad. The names on these signs represent the rebuilding that took place in and around post-war Neosho. The smoke from the burning buildings passes over the Masonic Hall and mingles with the smoke from two steam locomotives depicted along the top of the mural to the far right. One light gray and dark gray locomotive is seen from the front coming forward on gray railroad tracks, and to its right another tan green, dark gray, and light light gray locomotive is in profile headed to the left along tracks at the top of the mural. This locomotive has a green, light gray, and dark gray tender car behind it with the name of the railroad company St. Louis and San Francisco written on it in black block letters. The first locomotive represents the coming of the first railroad to Neosho and moves downward in the mural towards a larger-than-life male figure of a railroad worker. He strides up on to a rocky railroad grade. On his right shoulder, he carries a gray and blue shadowed wooden rail tie as he works to build tracks for the expanding railway system. His muscular upper body is naked, and he wears short, faded blue pants and upon his head a dark and light blue round crowned bowler style hat. The Atlantic and Pacific Railroad was the company that laid the first tracks into Neosho in 1870 as it worked its way westward to meet the Southern Pacific Railroad coming from San Francisco, California, building the second transcontinental railroad. The Atlantic and Pacific Railroad shortly thereafter became the St. Louis and San Francisco Railroad, better known as the Frisco Railroad. To the left of the railroad worker is the iconic iconic Frisco Railroad logo outlined in dark and light blue with a tan center with F-R-I-S-C-O spelled out in black capital letters across it. The logo idea came about during a railroad vice president's stop in Neosho where he noticed a drying raccoon hide tacked to the side of the depot. The local agent was supplementing his wages by tanning and selling hides. Rather than reprimand the worker, he bought the hide. Shortly thereafter, a drawing indicative of a tightly stretched raccoon skin with the word Frisco enclosed within its borders appeared in the corporate office and the Frisco trademark was born. The Frisco Railroad owned more than 200,000 acres in southwest Missouri, which were sold in 1882 to the Missouri Land and Livestock Company of Scotland. The company became known as the Scotch Land Company and established their American headquarters in Neosho and imported purebred Angus and Hereford bulls from Scotland and England to breed to local heifers held on their large company-owned farms. When the Scotch Land Company moved its headquarter out of Neosho, the building became the Spring City Hotel in 1890. To the right of the Frisco logo, we see Camp Crowder, which was established in 1941. There are three long, white, two-story, rectangular-shaped army barrack buildings with green-colored roofs on a field of green. Snaking past the barracks buildings is a white, winding road that disappears at the top of the green hill to the right of the last barracks building. In front of the barracks are three tall, slender gray telephone poles with cross arms which are spaced apart on the upper third of the pole and fastened at right angles to the upright pole. The telephone poles become progressively larger as they move forward into the foreground of the mural. Camp Crowder was a training center for the Signal Corps during World War II. The telephone poles in this mural represent the important training soldiers received at Camp Crowder, as much of communications during the war were conducted over telephone wires. The bases of the telephone poles are encircled by fluffy clouds of water vapor coming off the white and black three-stage NASA rocket that rises up 
to their right. The escaping water vapor from the rocket forms large, fluffy, white, gray, and dark gray billowing clouds that fill up the right lower corner of the mural. In 1956, about 2,000 acres of the former Camp Crowder were sectioned off and transferred to the United States Air Force. That same year, Air Force Plant Number 65, which was a Rocketdyne run site, opened. It was two of the veneer guidance engines producing a thousand pounds of thrust each that were made at Rocketdyne Neosho and were used in launching astronaut Colonel John Glenn into space aboard the Mercury Friendship 7 capsule on February 20th, 1962, when he became the first American to orbit the Earth, circling it three times. The Neosho mural was the result of a contest held in 1964 by the Safeway Grocery Store Company for a mural to be placed on its newly remodeled store across from Big Spring Park in Neosho. The company offered a $250 reward for the winning design, which would then be turned into a mosaic tile mural. 31 artists submitted entries, and Lawrence Sanchez had the winning design, which was turned into this mosaic tile mural, and installed in May of 1965 by Willis Tile Company of Joplin, Missouri. Sanchez studied art at the Boston Museum School of Fine Arts after serving in the U.S. Army. He eventually moved to Neosho, Missouri to work as a technical illustrator for Rocketdyne, which was a company located in Neosho that built rocket engines for NASA during the early space age. Another of his works, a large egg tempera mural of space he created for the Rocketdyne cafeteria, can now be viewed inside Davidson Hall on the Crowder College campus south of Neosho. That work of art also has an audio description available for use.